What's going on, family? This is Scrap of Box, the Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff series. Right now, we're going to cover the boxing history, decade by decade. We're going to start off with the 1920s. The next episode, we'll cover the 1930s. Episode after that, we'll cover the 1940s, 1950s, 1960s. We'll drop down to the 1900s. So right now, we're covering July 5th, 1920. Benny Leonard is knocked out of the ring. In the fifth round, he gets back into the ring, only to knock out Chicago's Charlie White in the ninth round, and Ben Harbor, Michigan, to retain the lightweight championship. That was an outstanding fight. Benny Leonard was called the Ghetto Wizard, and he was one of the greatest boxers of all times. I have him and Joe Gans, number one, as the greatest lightweight champion of all times. July 5th, 1920. What a fight. What a night. Now, George Carpentier knocks out Battling Siki in the fourth round to win the light heavyweight championship in Jersey City, New Jersey. October 11th, 1920. George Carpentier would eventually face Jack Dempsey, the Manasseh Mola, for a shot at the heavyweight championship would also face Dean Tunney, Tommy Gibbons, and many other fighters. He was a true legend, George Carpentier. He fought from featherweight all the way to heavyweight. He was an outstanding fighter. They called him the Orchid Man. And that would be quite an achievement. October 11th, 1920, George Carpentier knocks out Battling Levinsky. In four rounds. And that would earn him the light heavyweight title, Jersey City, New Jersey. December 14th, Jack Dempsey comes from behind to knock out Bill Brennan in the 12th round in New York, Madison Square Garden, to retain his heavyweight championship strap. September 14, 1920, Jack Dempsey would be in two for a fight of his life. And he would have it out with Bill Brennan. And that would be some fight. But he would pull back and catch up with Bill Brennan and retain his heavyweight championship strap. Now you see here, Jack Kern. Manager slash promoter. Fascinating. Great fight. This fight would go 12 rounds. Dempsey successfully defends his title. The champion knocks out Bill Brennan in the 12th round at Madison Square Garden. December 14th, 1920. To end the year, December 21st, 1920. Joe Lynch wins the Bantamway Championship crown. Fascinating. He defeats Pete Herman in a 15 round scrap and becomes a brand new Bantamway champion. Now these two men would go back and forth, exchanging the title. But on December 21st, 1920, Joe Lynch becomes a brand new champion in the Bantamway division. 
What a way to end the year of 1920. January 13th, 1921, Pete Herman stops flyweight champion Jimmy Wilde. 17 rounds in London. Jimmy Wilde was one of the greatest flyweight champions of all time. He would lose his title to Pancho Vila of the Philippines. Now Pete Herman would reign his Bantamweight Championship from Joe Lynch the British Bantamweight Champion also falls before Pete Herman in the 11th round of a scheduled 20 round match Pete Herman regains the Bantamweight title from Joe Lynch Former champion defeats Joe Lynch, his conquer in 15 round bout in Brooklyn, New York. That would be Broadway Arena. Wonderful speed, science, and snappy punching of New Orleans boxer earns him judge's decision. Outstanding. Great little fighter was Pete Herman from Louisiana, and he will regain his Bantamweight Championship strap from Joe Lynch. January 14, 1921, Benny Leonard floors Richie Mitchell three times, then is dropped and nearly killed himself, all in one round. Then it goes on to KO Mitchell in six rounds in New York to retain the lightweight championship. Phenomenal fighters. Benny Leonard to your right and Richard Mitchell to your left. This fight took place January 14th, 1921. The conquer of Wild Herman. And this is the fight with Jimmy Wild and Pete Herman. Pete Herman would knock out Jimmy Wild, the former flyweight champion. New Orleans boy stops English champion. In London, Herman blocks Wilde's right, then mixes at close quarters. That was an outstanding fight between little Jimmy Wilde and Bantamweight champion Pete Herman. February 7th, 1921. We had a final of 25 series between Jack Britton and Ted Kitt Lewis. 15 rounds. New York and retain the welterweight championship strap. Jack Whitten retains his crown. Ted Kid Lewis. Phenomenal fight series. 20 bouts between Jack Whitten. And Ted Kid Lewis. America's champion outboxes the British title holder, 15 rounds receiving unanimous decision of the judges. It was their 19th ranked encounter, and they would have one more fight after that. And that would be a ring classic. Phenomenal fight series between these two outstanding fighters. May 3rd, 1921 would be the year 
that future five-time middleweight and one-time welterweight champion, Walker Smith, would be born. And we will cover his story in the 1940s and 1950s series. But the great Sugar Ray Robinson, Walker Smith, would be born May 3rd, 1921. Boxing's first million dollar gate would take place July 2nd, 1921. Between the Manassa Mall of Jack Dempsey and the Orchid Man, George Carpentier. It would be for the heavyweight championship strap. Jack Dempsey defends his title by knocking out George Carpentier in the fourth round in Jersey City. 80,183 fans pay $1,789,238 to see the bout. Also the first title to carry on the video. And as you see here, Jack Dempsey and George Carpentier signed for the first million dollar game. Jack Kearns, Jack Dempsey's promoter and manager, in the foreground. Manasseh Mola, Jack Dempsey. He was the king of the Roaring Twenties. George Carpentier, phenomenal fighter. Jack Dempsey, George Carpentier, phenomenal fight in 1921, and George Carpentier is knocked out in four rounds. Would it be known as the first million dollar game? Dempsey drops Compartier in the fourth round of a great title match. Referee was J. Harry Everton. Fascinating fight. Future heavyweight champion, Ezra Charles, will be born July 7th, 1921, in Lawrenceville, Georgia. And he would accomplish a great deal in his career with the fights of Charlie Burley and Archie Moore. He would face Jersey Joe Walcott, Joe Lewis. Rocky Marciano, Jimmy Bivens, Pat Kaminsky, Pat Valentino, 
You'll see him in the 1940s and 1950s series. November 18th, 1921, Johnny Dundee, waiting since 1913 for another shot at the featherweight championship, gets the top opportunity and wins the vacant junior lightweight championship over George K. O. Cheney in five rounds in New York. Johnny Dundee, Scotch Wap, phenomenal fighter. He gains his title. Salute to Johnny Dundee. 1913, 1922. Gene Tunney defends. He defeats Battling Levinsky in 12 rounds in New York to win the America's Light Heavyweight Championship. Gene Tunney will become the brand new Light Heavyweight Champion. But on March 13th, Harry Gray would defeat Tommy Gibbons in 15 rounds in New York, Madison Square Garden. Fascinating fight between Harry Gray and Tommy Gibbons out of St. Paul's. And about for charity, Pittsburgh Tornado outpoints Tom in 15 rounds, but winner seems too light to tackle Jack Dempsey. Harry Gleb was entering for a fight with Jack Dempsey, so he would settle for Gene Tunney's light heavyweight championship strap. 1922 would be the year, February 15th, that Nat Flasher would unreveal the most precious jewel that he would ever own. The promotion of the Ring Magazine. This is the first edition of the Ring Magazine. I've had this magazine for 45 years. It was passed down to me from my dad. This is the original first edition of Ring Magazine. And it was first displayed on newsstands February 15th, 1922. Here you have Tex Vigil to your left. And Lord Lawsdale to the right. There were two promoters, one from England and one from the United States. I have every single edition of the Ring Magazine from February 1922 uh, to current. May 23rd, 1922, Harry Gleb, the Pittsburgh Windmill, defeats Gene Tunney for the light heavyweight championship of the world. And that would be Gene Tunney's first and only defeat that would come by way of Harry Gleb. Harry Gleb outpoints Gene Tunney for the light heavyweight championship. Here you have Harry Gleb on the scales and Gene Tunney looking on before their fight. 1922. Fascinating. And what's even more amazing than that is that Harry Gleb would hold the light heavyweight championship strap that he earned from Gene Tunney and he would defeat 1923. Middleweight champion, Johnny Wilson. Outstanding. Hats off to the new light heavyweight champion of America, Mr. Harry Gleb of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the human windmill. And unless the Frenchman decides that he wants none of his game, the next ring opponent for Manasseh Mola. Fascinating. 
June 11th, 1922, George Carpentier, the Orphan Man, knocks out Ted Kid Lewis in one round in London to retain the European Light Heavyweight Championship. Meanwhile, he is itching for another opportunity for the United States of America heavyweight champion, the Manasamola, Jack Dempsey. Benny Leonard defeats Ted Kid Lewis. But July 23rd, 1923, he would defeat Lou Tendler, Philadelphia Southpaw. One of the best Southpaws in the game. Arguably the greatest Southpaw of all times. Leonard strikes his hand in a match with Lou Tender. The title bout postponed when Benny Leonard's left thumb is injured in training four days before he was have boxed Philadelphia's ex-newsboy, Metacorpal, the bone hurt same mishap that befell Carpentier. The second time in the recent history of the prize win, the metacarpal bone has brought itself prominently before the public notice. It came about when Benny Leonard's idol of the Bronx and lightweight champion of the world dislocated his fracture to the metacarpal four days before he was supposed to meet Lou Tendler. $15,000 lost for promotions. With the announcement of Leonard's injury and the came postponement of Leonard Tendler match, which has aroused the greatest interest and thought are still four days away. These two men will eventually get it on. Leonard defeats Lou Tendler, but champion is hard pressed. Betty has hands full with Philadelphia's lightweight and great 12 round battle at Boyle's 30 Acres. We're looking at the Police Gazette scrapbook. This scrapbook is over a thousand pages. Betty Leonard to your left and Lou Tendler to the right. Fascinating fight between these two outstanding lightweight champions. September 14th, 1923, Jack Dempsey will be in the fight of his life, one of the greatest two-round fights of all times in the heavyweight division. He would face Luis Angel Furpo from Argentina, and that would be a world win of a fight, one of the greatest heavyweight championship matches in the entire history of the game. You see, Jack Dempsey goes out like a tiger and tags Louis Angel Furpo. He goes down. Furpo gets up. He eventually knocks Jack Dempsey out of the ring. Jack Dempsey comes up out of the ring to knock out Louis Angel Furpo. Phenomenal match. One of the greatest of all times. First knockdown in the second round, Furpo taking short count. Here you see Furpo looking over Dempsey. Dempsey flies out of the ring. Fascinating match that would take place. September 14th, 1923. Now, Harry Greb would stop Faye Kaiser in 12 rounds at Baltimore to retain his middleweight championship March 24th, 1924. But on July 24th, Gene Tunney would stop George Carpentier. 15 rounds in Madison Square Garden. And what a fight that would become. Because George Carpentier was looking forward for a rematch. 
was Jack Dempsey to Manasseh Mola. But this would now put Gene Tunney in line for a fight with the Manasseh Mola, Gene, Jack Dempsey. Tunney stops Capontier in the 15th round. The Frenchman claims of a foul and is ignored. George floored three times by Gene in the 10th, left the solar plexus and the 14th and his deciding blow. This puts me in mind of Barford Simmons and Gentleman Jim Corbett with the famous solar plexus punch. Fascinating fight between Gene Tunney and George Carpentier. September 1st, 1924, the great colored heavyweight champion, Harry Wills, defeats Louis Angel Firpo. He floors Louis Angel Firpo and then dominates the no decision 12 founder in Jersey City. And this was designed so that Harry Wills would not have to face Jack Dempsey in 1926 and that will allow Gene Tunney to get a crack at the heavyweight championship strap with Jack Dempsey Jack Dempsey would take a three year hiatus and when he finally decided to come back from show business he would choose Gene Tunney and lose his title and a rematch and a famous long count but it was because of Harry Wells, who was contracted to face Jack Dempsey in 1924. He couldn't face Jack Dempsey because Jack Dempsey would leave the ring for a few years. And the contract was if you defeated Louis Angel Purple, then I will fight you. Well, Harry Wells would not get that opportunity because they would decide to make it a no decision, even though Harry Wells had dropped Louis Angel Purple several times. This is what happened to the Black Fighter. They'd never got their shots and they were cheated out of title opportunities. So these two men would face each other over 17 times, Sam Langford and Harry Wills, but Harry Wills would lose his colored heavyweight championship when he had a 12 round decision over Louis Angel Furpo, and that title would go to George Godfrey. So Harry Wills was left with nothing. Unbelievable. Harry Wills pushes over Mr. Tuck Jackson. Dempsey's challenger takes fight and colored foreman and three rounds but gains very little prestige. Harry Wells easily stops Homer Smith. The color heavyweight knocks out Kalamazoo Mola in second round and sends him to the campus five times in the first canto. September 17, 1924. Gene Tunney goes the distance. He has no decision and rounds with Harry Grab in Cleveland. January 15, 1925, Ben Leonard decides to retire from the ring. That is a shock to everyone in the boxing world. Just 28 retires undefeated as lightweight champion. Love for Mother 
who worried about him, induced great boxer to hang up gloves, though still in his prime. Benny Leonard would eventually return to the ring. When the stock market was crashed in 1929, he would lose all his money, would be forced to come back and face several fighters, and eventually get in there with Canadian Vancouver Jimmy McLaurin, and he would retire from that point on. In 1947, Benny Leonard would collapse in the ring. in St. Nicholas Arena as he was refereeing two fighters. Benny Leonard, one of the greatest lightweight champions of all time. June 5th, 1925. Gene Tunney would take on St. Paul's light heavyweight Tommy Gibbons. Twelve rounds in New York. The last victory earned Tony the heavyweight title. He gave him a title shot, opportunity. It lasted 15 rounds with Jack Dempsey and had never been stopped before. Fascinating. Tommy Gibbons had an older brother, Mike Gibbons, who was a phenomenal middleweight. In fact, Mike Gibbons would hold the interim middleweight championship strap when Stanley Ketcher would be killed by Walter Dibley. He never earned the title. He never fought for the title. He never defended the title. Tommy Gibbons takes the count for the first time in his career when Gene Tunney was stopping. Fascinating. Now here you have Tunney Biggs for a match with Jack Dempsey after a 12-round knockout of Tommy Gibbons. New York hails Greenwich Villager as the next heavyweight champion. Gibbons counted out for the first time in his career. July 2nd, 1925, welterweight champion Mickey Walker would face middleweight champion Harry Greb for an opportunity to fight for the middleweight championship of the world. Harry Greb would defeat Mickey Walker. But Mickey Walker would have his hands full. He would be hurt several times in the 14th round. And after this fight, they would go to a bar. Mickey Walker would give him the business. But Harry Webb, being who he is, he was a tiger. He would take out Mickey Walker. This would be the same night as they fought earlier that day. And boy, did they have a war. These are two brawlers. The Toy Bulldog and a Pittsburgh Windmill. Fascinating fight that was. The referee, Ed Purdy, accidentally knocked down during the bout with Greb, goes to the hospital for treatment. Dislocated knee later that night is rumored that the two men would hold a rematch on the way to the street outside of a bar. These two men were something else.
July 4th, 1925. Jimmy McLaurin would defeat Pancho Villa. July 14th, the flyweight champion Pancho Villa, the age 23, dies by unclear teeth, aggravated during his bout with Jimmy McLaurin. It was basically an infection in his jaw. Sports World mourns his passing. World Flyweight Champion succumbs to operation in San Francisco Hospital. Man of Destiny and the Ring. Smith Pancho Vila. One of the greatest Filipino fighters of all times. Mickey Walker. Mickey Walker captures the welterweight championship strap from veteran Jack Benton in the 15 rounds. Elizabeth Ladd, too strong for 37-year-old champion, who was great in defeat. New York boxing body calls. Bets off. Mickey Walker. And Jack Clinton. Fascinating fight. The Toy Bulldog, Mickey Walker. One of the greatest welterweights and fantastic middleweight champion of all times. Camera studies of Mickey Walker, new welterweight champion, as he defeats Jack Clinton. Back to 1923, Johnny Wilson loses his title to the Pittsburgh Windmill, Harry Gregg. New middleweight champion crowned as Gregg defeats Johnny Wilson. Harry Gregg wins the middleweight championship strap from Johnny Wilson on decision and 15 rounds. Pittsburgh boxer too speedy for Johnny in New York title bout, but Ladder puts up a good battle and his game in defeat. Harry Gleb, I have number two, is the greatest fighter of all times, so right behind Sam Lankford. February 26, 1926, Tiger Flowers defeats Harry Gleb and becomes the brand new middleweight champion. Madison Square Garden, fascinating fire, was Tiger Flowers. First Negro ever to head a division, post Bible, as he battles J.D. Pittsburgh, taking 15 rounds, contest on points. Tiger Flowers was the middleweight championship strap from Harry Greb. Flowers first Negro middleweight champion. Theodore Tiger Flowers is the 18th boxer to hold the middleweight championship strap. You have Tom Taylor, George Rookie, Mike Dundee, Mike, I'm sorry, Mike Donovan, non parallel Jack Dempsey, George Lebelanti, Bob Fitzsimmons, Tommy Ryan, Kid McCoy, Joe Thomas, Stanley Ketchum, Billy Papke, Frank Klaus, George Chip, Al McCoy, Mike O'Dowell, Johnny Wilson, and the great Harry Gregg paid admission to the title. The bout was number 16,337, and the gross receipts totaling 104,569. Fascinating year for these great fighters. That's the end of the 1920s, part one. Look out for 1920s Part 2. This is Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fist of Series. Seeing all great fighters and all great fights will never be forgotten on my channel. Salute to all these dynamic fighters as we go through the history of boxing. Thanks for hanging in here with me.